Yes, uh, thank you. Absolutely. It's been uh, quite hectic uh, here. Uh, my morning started at 4.30 uh, today, and I've, I've just been in and out of um, uh, meetings, conference calls, Zooms. Uh, I do a lot of work now with East Coast uh, issues, uh, serving as president of the NCI, and so uh, the day there starts at 8 a.m., uh, 5 o'clock our time, <laughs> and so uh, it, it's been quite a challenge, but uh, I was so honored and happy to have the opportunity uh, to make some remarks here and to address such an incredible um, team of folks that have a long history of commitment to the, the greater good and the, and the public interest here in the state of Washington. Uh, as I pointed out earlier, and I appreciate the comment about listening, you know, some of our elders say, uh, the creator gave us two ears and one tongue for a reason. And so we do have to listen. And I, I really appreciate the points that were made uh, as soon as I got on the call here. I take those words to heart. So thank you for that. I, I, I wanted just to talk uh, uh, briefly in closing out here how uh, from our perspective, from the perspective of Coast Salish peoples here in the Pacific Northwest, we have long known that a day of reckoning, uh, like what we're facing at this moment and this time it is coming and it's long overdue. Uh, when, you, when you look at what, what our generation is facing in this moment, it's a series of apocalyptic challenges, multi-generational challenges. And the problem didn't just start last year or a, a lifetime ago. What we're witnessing is a symptom. Th these are all symptoms of a much deeper imbalance that began centuries ago. And the impacts of climate change are like this tremendous tsunami of uh, energy that we can't see it. But those who pay attention to science, those who pay attention to traditional and indigenous knowledge know that uh, an imbalance to the degree that our society has been uh, living for for generations it is coming to a head. And if we don't change our, our ways and if we don't change our actions and if we don't change how we approach public policy, how we approach uh, passing laws in this state and in this country, we are gonna hit a point of no return and we are rapidly approaching that point of no return. And so I am just so happy and honored anytime we get a chance to get out of the day-to-day -day, uh, business that we are all in involved in, to look uh, long-term, to look collectively, to look at what it is that has sustained us thus far and what we need to do going forward. And I know that uh, right now, it, times seem dark, they seem challenging, uh, sometimes even seemingly impossible uh, with everything that's happening in this country. We don't even have an ability to, to, uh, to go to uh, our elders' homes, to even just have conversations anymore. We're all virtual. Uh, I, I've been to um, many congressional hearings and uh, uh, regional hearings, intertribal meetings, and it's all been virtual. It's been days since I've actually really engaged with people in person. And we're gonna start to see the impacts of, of that. This new normal is having a tremendous impact on us. But I just want to, to remind everyone that those things that uh, have, have uh, confronted our generation, while the task is tall and the mountains seem high, the, the strength that lies within us, the strength that lies within our wisdom and, and knowledge that we've gained thus far is going to lead us out of this. Uh, we need to embrace those basic fundamental values that we all know to be true that have made this country strong because right now, quite frankly, this country is unhinged from those basic principles of truth, of justice, of equity. And that too is a symptom of a much deeper imbalance that didn't begin just uh, this last year or even four years ago. It, it, it began uh, generations ago and our generation is, is the generation that's called to rise to meet these challenges. And I am positive that with uh, the opportunity that does lie in front of us, every bit of our weaknesses, every bit of our vulnerabilities are exposed. And so we have the opportunity to take a hard look at that truth that we are all facing. We have an opportunity to reconcile our actions, to reconcile public policy. We can no longer approach public policy with regard to our climate in a way that's mindful of a political calculus. What can we politically pass? 
No, we must all be brave. We must be courageous. We must be bold because we are running out of time and we are going to continue to face global pandemics. We're going to continue to face the symptoms of a much deeper imbalance if we don't embrace those core values that have made us so strong, that have made this country strong, and that opportunity is in front of us right now. And I'm just confident that with the conversations like the one we have today, with an opportunity to strategically look at that future that uh, lies in front of us while standing on a solid foundation and letting our leaders, and, and I am so appreciative of the point as well about our young people, because our young people are ready, our young people are eager, but they need to know that there are leaders that are, are setting a good example that we are being bold and courageous because we do not have time. And so um, my hands are raised to everyone here. I'm confident that we are closing a very dark chapter in, in US history and we're about to open a new chapter of hope and a new chapter of coming together in a sustained way because it is now clear more than ever to everyone, not only here in the state of Washington, across the United States, but globally throughout the world, everybody knows and understands we are at that point where we have to be bold and we have to come together in venues like this. And I'm just so happy and encouraged anytime I have an opportunity to engage with folks like this and want to uh, reaffirm and recommit uh, everything that we have uh, within our indigenous communities here in the Pacific Northwest uh, to continue to be partners because no one is immune from what we're facing and everyone has a responsibility and everyone has uh, gifts, talents, and, and a vision for that brighter future that we all know we want to lead for our children. So with that, Siokwil, I appreciate the opportunity. I'm honored to uh, serve with each and every one of you and look forward to our future collaboration. Siokwil. Juan, thank you so much for those words, <clears throat> for bringing us back to our core values and for your incredible leadership uh, in this country and with the National Congress of Indians and with the Quinault tribe. You are a truly remarkable leader and, and working with you, we will have a better future. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. Um, that closes our second session. Thank you all for participating. We will now take what we learned from Fawn, from uh, President Cossey and her panel, the panel we had earlier, fold that into our final blueprint for sustainability, where you will see all 45 recommendations for action. And by the way, Gary Locke, one of those recommendations for action is about packaging. So that's, that's, um, right. that's good. So um, the work here was the work of, of all of you. The product of, uh, that we're gonna present is the product of all of yours. We will be reaching out to each and every one of you as we refine the blueprint for sustainability, blueprint for resiliency to get your final comments and remarks. Uh, President Kossi, thank you very much. Thank you. And Vaughn, thank you so much. And it's a, just a privilege to work with you. And everyone, thank you very much. And you'll be hearing from us. Uh, thank you. Let's close the session now. Thank you so much. Thank you.